Well, it's important to understand that errors in chromosomes, we all have 46 chromosomes, and when an embryo has one too many or one too few chromosomes, that's the most common error in embryos, and it leads to them uh, not implanting or failing to generate a pregnancy. It can lead to an implantation but a miscarriage. It can even lead to an ongoing pregnancy that's lethal uh, with chromosomal errors. So it would be desirable to start a pregnancy without these chromosomal errors, and chromosomal screening is an attempt to check the embryo for all 46 chromosomes prior to transfer. The PGD was a term given to um, the testing we did for the prior 15 years, and really it involved testing for about five to 10 chromosomes as opposed to all 23 pairs. So it was partial chromosome screening, and it used a tool called FISH, which was rather uh, imprecise at even measuring those chromosomes. So the new method is comprehensive. It looks at every chromosome, and it seems to have a high degree of accuracy. The embryos are cultured to the blastocyst stage, which is about 60 cells. The embryo then has cells around the outside called the trophectoderm cells, really the placenta cells. And you can remove a cell or two from the placenta layer and not touch the baby or the inner cell mass. The embryo is then frozen while the cells from the placenta are analyzed for all 46 chromosomes. The next month, the patient then comes back for a frozen embryo transfer. And of course, embryos that are normal and only those embryos are chosen for replacement. The patient goes through the stimulation and has the egg retrieval and then is done that month while we culture the embryos, test them, and freeze them. She then comes back the next month taking just estrogen and progesterone to prepare the uterine lining for a frozen embryo transfer. And at that point, the screened embryos are replaced. There are actually studies separate from genetic testing showing that the uterus is more receptive in a frozen cycle because you're mimicking the natural cycle as opposed to a stimulated cycle where the patient's on loads of fertility drugs. It's a bit of a hormone storm. There's a lot of things happening that are abnormal and seem to lower the ability of the embryo to implant. So we think it's an advantage not only to put back screened and genetically normal embryos, but to put them back in the best possible uterus. Currently, we are suggesting it for patients that are 39 and older because advanced age puts them at risk for chromosomal errors. Patients who failed IVF before, and the question is are they failing because their previous embryos were all genetically abnormal, we'd like to understand that. And then the third group would be patients who've had recurrent miscarriage because most miscarriages, over 70%, are due to chromosomal errors. And again, screening the embryos would allow you to avoid those recurrent miscarriages. We have seen um, very high success rates uh, in the 70% range. The more remarkable statistic, though, is that the success rates are uniform from young women under 35 up to and including age 42. So previously, we always saw a marked decline in success as women aged. But up to 42, if you, if you screen for chromosomal errors, if you eliminate those, you don't see a reproductive decline or a pregnancy rate decline in women up to 42. We also see a marked lowering of the miscarriage rate. The miscarriage rate in patients who've had screened embryos transferred is only 6%. In older women, it may be as high as 35%. So it's giving us high pregnancy rates, but equally important, low miscarriage rates.